Okay, let's talk about the follower modifier. Now, in this video, I'll show you how to quickly create these. Well, right now, cache disappeared. Great news. But anyways, this is how what the animation looks like. It's basically like a pop-up word for word without having to animate words individually. Now, the way that the modifier, the follower modifier works is that you create a certain animation and then the characters afterwards will follow after a certain delay that you set up. Now, this is cool, but there's a little bit of an issue or like lack of function that doesn't allow you to do some stuff. Now, this is cool if you want to use these for like a subtitle or something like that. Now, if you have snap captions or some or so or a plugin like that, then you probably don't want to use this effect. But this is probably cool if you want to add certain a certain title like animation or screen that has this sort of like text of like word for word reveal, right? All right, so let's just get on with it and let me show you. The first thing you're gonna need, obviously, is a text plus. I'm gonna copy these right here because I don't wanna have to modify the fonts and stuff again. You already know how to do that. I will assume if you don't then just click right here and then you can modify or customize your text all right so to add a modifier you can add these from the edit page all you have to do is right click right here and then go to follower now these by itself it doesn't do anything the reason is that we have to go into fusion to modify or to see the modifiers it would be cool if once you add that another tab showed up right here maybe that's something that you will come like it will come in the next version of DaVinci. I don't know. We'll see. You can only hope, but yeah. Okay, now open Fusion right here. Now ignore these two. These are two other effects that I added later on. So we're just going to take a look at these template that we have right here. After you add a modifier, you will see this tab right here show up or it will activate. Once you activate, if you move anything right here, um, here you have the orders, which is a couple of different things that you can use to animate, like right, to, like they say inside out, outside in, etc., etc. In this case, we use left to right, and then delay delay type between each character, and then delay. I just set these to two, but you can also animate these if you want to play around and see how that ends up looking. Now, if you go here to the transform section, this is the only tab that allows you to select. Uh, a couple of different things here like by line or by words the way that i wanted to create this animation was by using the position controls and the only position controls that you get are here in the shading section unfortunately if you create a position um animation right here let's create this one right here real quick and a path will automatically be created so ignore that and then you go to follower again and then you can modify these you will now, after you press play, we'll see how that moves. But the problem here is that this does not allow you to do it word by word. Like there's no setting here that allows you to do that. Or at least I haven't been able to find it. You can try to use the manual curve, but that is completely... I wouldn't say unusable. It is usable, but if you have a long text, it just becomes a huge mess. So it probably doesn't work. Now, the only way that I was able to create the animation that you saw at the beginning was by doing these. Okay, so the cool thing is that after you animate right here, you can modify your text right here and move these um, around and then the modifier will still have its own effect. You can modify these elements without affecting that animation. All right, so we're going to go to frame, let's say 14, and we're going to create a size keyframe. And also a pivot keyframe. Now ignore that pivot keyframe. Whenever you do anything or create a keyframe on anything that has any sort of change in position, this happens. So that's what you have to do. All right, now we're gonna move these backwards and I'm gonna move these a little bit, the pivot point right here. And you can see the pivot point right here. So if you wanna manually adjust these, you can do that too in the viewer itself, right? All right, now, if I decrease the size of these like that, at the same time, we have that animation that happens. And then, and then to make it actually look interesting and cool, you go to the spline section, press fit to screen, select everything, press F. Now, for some reason, the curve right here is blue or purple. 
I have a red light, a blue light filter on my screen, so I'm not able to see it properly. It's darker than you will probably see it. But yeah, so after you select the curve, you can modify the curve in the way that the text looks, and it looks a lot better that way. I know I also wanted to create a sort of like a fading effect, but the problem with that was that there wasn't an option to do so right here because I wanted to do this word by word. The only workaround I had for this was to use the opacity right here. And we're going to do the same, just decrease the opacity right here and then try to match the curves right here. Press Ctrl F on F and then selecting everything like that. Then we can try to adjust that right like that. Now, as you can see here, you will see that the reveal of the opacity is actually letter by letter right here, character by character. So you can do that and leave it like that if you like it. But if you don't use that, it still looks cool because it just shows up from nowhere. And if you want to have some sort of, um, what do you call it? like, yeah, like the motion blur, the opacity tags along or plays along with the motion blur, I think a little bit. So you can probably simulate an opacity animation by using motion blur right here that we have, like we have it. And then just do that. And then let's see, center bias all the way to one like that. And then you have it like that and then and then it works pretty well like that as well so you can animate these with the opacity or not animate it with the opacity. now the motion blur is in the tool section the modifiers themselves won't have it because if you add the motion blur right here from this tab it will automatically apply to anything that you animate on this text now one cool thing that i added on this effect was a glow and for that it was just a simple glow note and then I decrease the glow size and also decrease the blending mode a little bit so it's not that punchy, right? And then that's what it looks like. And the last touch that I wanted to add to these was the camera shake. So it's a note that is also an effect on the effects on the edit page if you want to do that there. But I think it shows up as an open face. Yeah, so on the camera shake, what I did was that I just decreased the scale of motion and speed. Otherwise, it would just look crazy like this. And it's a little bit too shaky for my liking. Yeah, I don't like it that much. So you want it to be smooth, right? Sort of like floating. So you have to play around with the values right here. And then you will see that it's moving like that. Now, you can also do these if you want to have a different type of shake without that many um, controls or values. Add a transform node right here. And on this transform node, you can press right click and then modify these with a shake. And then here you will just adjust the smoothness. The lower you go, the sharper or the crazier the animation will look like. The higher you go, the smoother it will become. And then here you will just set these up to 0.5 and 0.5. And then holding control, you move these a little bit to the left and then a little bit to the right. And you will see that it moves a little bit. Um, and you can adjust these if you wanted them to move a little bit more or less, right? The closer to the center point, the less they're going to move. But they're still going to take that center point as a main um, guide point, right? And then you can reseed these if you want these to be a little bit different. Then go back to the edit page. You can modify your text right here. And you can use some sort of like cool and interesting texture background like I did right here to create your effect. You don't have to do it with papers. In this case, I use the papers generators that come with the paper full effects. So just go to pre-made elements and then you will find the paper texture generators right there that you can just drag and drop and then use that. And if you want to animate these, you can also modify these with a shake. But that will just make the video go on and on and on and on and on because you can always do more stuff to whatever you're creating. Before I leave, let me just mention that if you want to add paper full effects to your videos, I, I'm, I have been working on the version 3 of the paper full effects that will be coming out soon and it will have a ton of new features compatibilities, bugs that I've been solving and fixing. And then I've also added a bunch of cool functions that will blow your mind. And I'm also trying to figure out a way to create a ton more like pre-made versions of the same thing so that you have 
a lot more variations to choose from with the same animation yeah that's a, I, I can just keep on going and talking about these but i don't want to take more of your time now go ahead and try this out if you want to download these i'm going to try to put these on the suave website on the fourth world page so look for it right there and i'm going to put these on the memberships i think it should work on the free membership uh tier as well so let me know if it doesn't but yeah and before you leave make sure to check out this video right here because i think it's something that you will find really 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 useful now yeah bye